Aquatic invasive species threaten California's waters and their beneficial uses. Aquatic invasive species may cause economic, environmental, and even human health harm. Aquatic invasive species can have negative impacts on our water supplies, agriculture, fisheries, ecological functions, waterways, and more. Aquatic invasive species are plants, animals, or disease agents that are not native to an ecosystem. Proper planning and decontamination techniques should be practiced by recreationalists, water quality monitors, watershed professionals, and aquatic scientists because they are all potential vectors of aquatic invasive species. To protect California's waters and their beneficial uses, it is important that we all act in ways which will prevent the introduction or spread of aquatic invasive species. The preparation of a hazard analysis critical control point plan is a process that every monitoring program should go through. It will allow each program to produce a specific plan that addresses how they will prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species from their activities. Some of the aquatic invasive species that we are concerned about include Eurasian water milfoil, hydrilla, Brazilian waterweed, didymo, zebra mussels, New Zealand mud snail, chytrid fungus, and whirling disease. In this video, we will present a summary of methods to clean, decontaminate, and disinfect waders, footwear, and water quality monitoring equipment to prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species. The treatment methods that we will cover include cleaned and dedicated gear, drying, freezing, heating, and the use of chemicals as disinfectants. To clean your gear, inspect boots, waders, nets, and sampling equipment. Pay special attention to inspect all crevices and dislodge any material that you find. If applicable, separate removable insoles and outsoles from your wading boots. You may also need to remove boot laces. Prior to leaving the sampling site, rinse and brush off conspicuous mud, debris, and plant material from boots, waders, nets, and sampling equipment using a stiff bristled brush. Once your equipment has been cleaned, it can be decontaminated or disinfected. This can be done on site or you can bag up your equipment for treatment at another location. The use of dedicated field gear for a specific location is a great way to prevent transferring aquatic invasive species from one location to another. Be sure to always clean your waders and footwear and sampling equipment after each and every use. The first method that we'll look at in controlling aquatic invasive species on your equipment is through drawing. 
allow cleaned equipment to thoroughly dry in sunlight. Note that there is a varying amount of time that's needed to control various aquatic invasive species. It can range from keeping equipment dry for three hours regarding Ketrid fungus to keeping your equipment dry for three to five days regarding quagga and zebra mussels. The next treatment method that we will demonstrate is freezing. Place cleaned waders, footwear, and sampling equipment in a freezer that's kept at 32 degrees Fahrenheit or colder. Keep your gear in the freezer for 8 to 12 hours until it's frozen solid. This treatment method is effective for New Zealand mud snails, quagga and zebra mussels, and didymo. Our next demonstration will be the thermal treatment method. Clean field equipment can be effectively decontaminated through the application of heat. This can be accomplished with either steam or hot water. Depending on the aquatic invasive species to be treated for, treatment temperatures and exposure times will vary. Our last demonstration will be the chemical treatment for disinfection. Cleaned waders, footwear, and sampling equipment can be cleaned by soaking, dipping, or scrubbing with a dilute solution of a disinfectant. In our demonstration, we'll be using a dilute solution of quaternary ammonia. Before initiating this method, Read all health and safety material related to your disinfectant. This would be the label and its material safety data sheet, also referred to as an MSDS. Acquire and use all proper personal protection equipment, especially rubber gloves and splash-proof eye protection. Next, you'll need to prepare your disinfection solution. Prior to disinfection, you'll need to make sure that your waders, footwear, and sampling equipment are clean. Treat your cleaned waders, footwear, and sampling equipment with your disinfection solution. After treatment, thoroughly rinse your waders, footwear, and sampling equipment. We have found the following equipment to be useful in employing the chemical disinfection method. Two five-gallon buckets including lids, one bucket containing a diluted disinfectant, and the other bucket for your wench water, one container of your diluted disinfectant, a one-liter spray bottle filled with your diluted disinfectant, stiff bristled brushes, your safety equipment, latex or rubber gloves and splash proof safety goggles, water, and your MSDS sheets. It's suggested that you perform your work over a tarp or a utility mixing tray. We don't want our disinfectant to inadvertently treat our soils or waters. To prepare your dilute disinfection solution, first put on your personal protection equipment. Fill a container with water that you wish to add to your bucket or spray bottle. Put the water into that container.
Next, pour off a measured amount of your disinfectant to ensure the proper dilution. And then place this disinfectant into your pre-measured amount of water. We will demonstrate two chemical disinfection procedures. The first is by spraying dilute disinfection solution onto your field equipment and allowing it to remain in contact for at least 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, reinspect your treated equipment and then thoroughly rinse your equipment before using it again. Equipment can also be submerged within a bucket of dilute disinfectant solution and allowed to remain in contact for at least 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, inspect your equipment again. Then submerge your equipment into a 5-gallon bucket of clean rinse water and agitate. Do not dispose of any disinfectants in or along waterways. Always dispose of dilute disinfectants into drains rooted to wastewater treatment facilities.